All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to start my lesson giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rachakwadash, the bonus of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Also, want to give a Shalom to the elected of the nation of Israel. This is a Ratazah from the Great Millstone GMS Atlanta camp. Once again, with the, uh, another video. And the title of this video is, And There Was War in Heaven. All right, and it comes from scripture here, Revelation 12 and 7. You know, just a quick lesson to, to, to show that this war in heaven was not an actual war <laughs> that took place in the spiritual realm. All right. As many Christians would have you to believe. <clears throat> OK, many Christians, I'm not saying all because there might be some of them that maybe woke up to that understanding. But many Christians believe that there was an actual <laughs> uh, 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 war or feud that took place. In the spiritual realm, all right, or heaven, where it was uh, the righteous angels, <laughs> all right, you know, basically going mano y mano, so to speak, with the uh, with the demons, all right, and there was a fight, and, and Satan got cast down to the earth, and they linked that with a uh, Lucifer, written of in a. Uh, Revelation, uh, excuse me, uh, I believe that's Isaiah, the 14th chapter. And it's not talking about that, man. This is this is talking about an actual a actual war that's going to take place in the firmament between the heavenly angels and Esau's uh, air force and the space force. All right. So this is a future prophecy of something that's going to happen. And I'll show you that. All right. And I'm going to just start here, um, Revelation 12, again to the point, verse 7. It says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. Now, this dragon here is not talking about this, the, the actual spiritual demon, Satan. This is, this is referring to the new uh, revived Roman Empire. All right, because who's the dragon when you read the scriptures? It's speaking about Rome. All right. And, and, and we're living in the. Re, uh, how would you say? Basically, Rome reincarnated, so to speak, or Rome resurrected. It was it was wounded for a time, but then it came back according to prophecy. All right. And we'll show you that in the next chapter. OK. Revelations 13. Um, hell, I just started at one. Okay, Revelation 13 and 1, it says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads, excuse me, and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. This is speaking of NATO in the EU. All right, this, this new beast system that runs the earth, all right, via Esau Edom, all right, which Edom... And Esau basically represents the so-called white man. He's in power. This is his power structure that's governing the earth. <clears throat> it says, uh, verse 2, it says, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Okay? You go back, the, the, the origins of this beast goes back to the Greeks. Okay? The Greeks were Edomites. It says, And, the, and his feet were as... The feet of a bear. This bear here represents the Russians. All right. Which the feet represent the end. So the end of the system is going to come by the way of these Russians. Okay. Gog and Magog, man. It says in the mouth, excuse me, in his mouth as the mouth of a lion, which represents Great Britain. And the dragon gave him his power. The, the dragon is not talking about Satan. That's talking about the Roman Empire. All right, in his seat and great authority. So this is the the, the the entity that thrives or that that drive uh not thrives but drives this beast is Rome. Okay, the 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 the, the spirit of the Roman Empire, man. Now it says here, verse three, it says, And I saw one of his heads, all right, one of those heads being the, the uh Roman Empire. When you read up, it speaks about having the seven heads. The seven heads are the seven Edomite kingdoms that were on the earth, all right, Rome, Greece, you know, the Spanish, the French, and all that, right? It says, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. It was wounded, okay, speaking of the Roman Empire, 
All right, the king it, it was it was it was down for for a particular time, and then it says what? And his deadly wound was healed. Going back to the Renaissance period when Esau Edom <coughs> rose back into power. Okay, doing what the thirteen or the fourteen hundreds. It says, and all the world wondered after the beast. See that? So this is the the new the new revised. Roman Empire is currently ruling the earth. So this is the dragon that is speaking about, man. Remember, this is a future prophecy. This has not come to pass yet. All right. It says, uh, oh, and, and just and for the record, all right, the angels are not fighting one another, man. All right. The, 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 the spiritual realm. All right. Or heaven, as you would call it. All right. The spirit, the spirit world is in complete order. All right. All the angels are in complete order. And they're subject to the most high, man. There's, there's no fighting <laughs> breaking down in the heavens, man. That's stupid, man. And I'm going to show you a couple of scriptures that I read earlier. This is, um, what's that? Wisdom of Solomon 8 and 1. And then we'll jump over to, ver uh, to chapter 9. It says, uh, Wisdom of Solomon 8 and 1. It says, Wisdom reacheth from one end to another mightily. <laughs> And sweetly doth she order all things. All right, so wisdom puts everything in order. All right, when 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 things are, do, are dealt with with wisdom, you know, when when wisdom is is utilized, things are set in order. Okay, and that's why this world is in such disarray and dysfunction because the world is not governing after the spirit of wisdom. All right, the wisdom of uh, the wisdom of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai in these scriptures. All right. But when the kingdom is set up, that's when wisdom is going to flourish and all things are going to be in order. And guess what? Wisdom dwells in the spiritual realm. It's wisdom of Solomon nine and one. It says, O power of my fathers and Lord of mercy, who has made all things with thy word. All right. Which really that's going into the Lord. All right. It says in ordained man. Through thy wisdom, and he, Slakia, that he should have dominion over the creatures which thou hast made. All right. It's going back to the beginning, Genesis. It says, In order the world according to equity and righteousness, and execute judgment with an upright heart. See that? So this wisdom that that well, let me just keep reading. <laughs> Here's the point, verse four. It says, give me wisdom that sitteth by th thy throne and reject me not from among thy children. So wisdom dwells beside the throne of, of the heavenly father. All right. Wisdom is in the, the most highest habitation. And we just read that wisdom orders all things. So how the hell is wisdom dwelling all throughout the heavens is sitting beside the throne of the most high. But yet there's a war in the spiritual realm. That don't make no goddamn sense. You see, it says, give me wisdom that sitteth by thy throne and reject me not from among thy children. So wisdom dwells with the heavenly father. Wisdom dwells with uh, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai in, in his habitation. All right. The, the spiritual realm. So the question again is how the hell <laughs> are the angels fighting each other, man? That would be what? That would be out of order. Okay. That means wisdom is not with the most high, which you, which you know that not to be true. See, so that, 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 that cuts that, man. And by the way, of course, let's, uh, what was that? Uh, what's that Job? Okay. The angels are subject to the most high, man. They're again, they're in complete order. Let's get that Job. Uh, where we at here? Is that Job, Job, the second chapter? Job, uh, Job two and one. Again, there was a day. When the sons of God, all right, he's speaking of the, uh, of the of the heavenly angels. It says came to present themselves before the Lord Yahweh Shai, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. So Satan is the son of God, but just on the left hand side. It says, and the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth. And from walking up and down in it. So it should show you that Satan is a, is a son of God. So how the hell can 
<laughs> again, the spirits are subject unto the most high. And when you read the dialogue that they had, you know, Job Job was uh being set up to be tested by Satan. All right? But the most high gave Satan the green light to do that. All right? Cuz Satan is is an adversary. He's meant you know uh, um you know as a, as a contrary to test us, man. But guess who sent them? The heavenly Father. Satan is not rebelling against the most high like people have Christians have this idea that uh, God and Satan are uh, uh, going against each other. No, Satan works for the Heavenly Father, man. All right. I think, uh, yeah, that was the main point I wanted to read on that. Let's go back to Revelations 12. And um, back to verse 7, I believe it was. All right. Revelations 12 and 7. It says, and there was war in heaven. So we understand that, that this couldn't be possible if... Wisdom dwells with the heavenly father, sits by his throne. So there was no goddamn war in heaven, man. Speaking about the spiritual realm, this war, once again, is talking about uh, in, in the uh, in the uh, firmament. OK, because heaven could also represent the firmament, man. Heaven also could represent a kingdom on the earth like 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 America. All right. America is a heaven to the so-called white man. You know hell, this earth is a heaven to the uh, super rich elite. OK, so it depends on what, what, what context you're reading it in. So it says there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against. Excuse me, the dragon and the dragon fought his angels. All right. And our Lord uh, and our, our Lord, Yahweh Shai is going to be spearheading. That. Uh, that prophecy. Let me get this, 2nd Ezra 13. But this pretty much says the same thing. Uh, let's start at 1. <clears throat> this is 2nd uh, Ezra 13 and 1. And it came to pass after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. All right, you're going to read that this man is speaking of our Lord, who the world only calls Jesus Christ, whose name in the Hebrew is what? Yahweh Shai. This is who this is speaking about. In the, the thousands of heaven, all right, is speaking of the angels, all right, Michael and his angels, all right? So it's the same, the same prophecy. It says, and when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. This is speaking of the uh, so-called UFO invasion, as Esau would call it. All right, now the the the, the UFO invasion is Yahweh Shai and his and the other angels coming into the Earth's atmosphere. Okay, Revelations one and seven. Reading on, it says uh, verse four, and 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 whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it faileth the fire. All right, and that's 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 speaking of the uh the 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 the, the fire that's gonna that's gonna actually come out of the chariot. All right, verse five it says, and after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. See that this this, this speaking of the dragon and his angels, all right, these are men, all right. Uh, 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 um, essentially a, a military Verse 6 But I beheld and lo He had graved himself a great mountain And flew up upon it This mountain is speaking of The 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 uh, chariot All right That our Lord is going to come in All right The so-called UFO Was likened into the size of a mountain Verse 7 But I would have seen a region Or place where out the hill was graven And I could not So that's how big this so-called UFO was, man. All right, you couldn't tell where it ended or where it started. That's why I was likening it to a mountain. Verse 8, it says, And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid, and yet there's fight. This is speaking of the uh uh again, going back to Revelation 7, the dragon and his angels fighting against all right, Yahweh Shai, Michael. 
and the other angels. Verse 9, it says, And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he had sent out of his mouth, as we read earlier, as it had been a blast of fire. The mouth, the mouth of the blast of fire is again referring to the laser beam that's going to come out the out the chariot, like the show you in the movie uh, War of the Worlds. When you're zapping people to dust. It says, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight, and burned them up, everyone, so that upon a sudden and an innumerable multitude, uh, nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and the smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was so afraid. So when you read about where it says, uh, Satan didn't prevail. Let's let's go let's go back to Revelation 12. <clears throat> All right. When you read verse um verse 8, it says, And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. So we just read what that what that means. All right, when it says the, the multitude fell and nothing was to be perceived but smoke and dust. Meaning what? They was destroyed, man. Their military, their, their, all their forces, the Lord brought them down. Okay? It's not talking about the angels falling out the goddamn uh, sky coming from the... That's not talking about that, man. Let's get another one. This is Haggai. Uh, uh, I think it's Haggai like 3 and 13 or something like that. Excuse me. 2. Uh, is it 2 and 22? It was somewhere in this chapter. There we go. All right. This is a precept. This is Haggai 2 and 22. It says, and I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen. Okay. Which we're currently in, like, like the brother said, the uh, heathenistic age. Okay. The heathen that's ruling the earth right now is Esau, Edom. All right. Which was another question that the, that the Virginia brothers posed to Volcab Malone. In their dialogue, and his ass didn't want to answer because he was cut. Okay, Esau is ruling the earth, and the Most High says he's going to destroy the, the kingdoms of the heathen. And then it says, What? And I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them. All right, the modern day uh, uh, chariots, where well, well, you got uh, 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 aerial chariots, man, these fighter jets, these, these spaceships, and all that, that Esau is going to try to use. To fight against the Lord, man. All right. Like we just read in 2nd 13. The great multitude that was prepared to fight. See that? But the Lord said, what? He's going to overthrow them, man. It says, and the horses and their riders shall come down. Every one by the sword of his brother. So the Most High is going to bring you nations down. All right. All your military or your military might. Your, your space force, your air force. It's not going to be no match <laughs> for the for the uh, uh the power of the most high matter of fact let's let's get that uh it says the the egyptians are men and not and not the most high i think that's isaiah the is isaiah 30 it's either 30 or 19 uh pardon me for a second i think it's it's probably 19 uh, yeah. Let's let's get, let's grab that real quick, and then we'll uh <clears throat> shoot back the revelations, and then we'll uh go ahead and sign off. I think it's nineteen. Um, you know what? It's probably it's probably Isaiah thirty one, but. Yep, Isaiah 31. <clears throat> All right, another precept. This is um Isaiah 31 and um in three. It says, Now the Egyptians are men. <clears throat> Which we know the, 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 the ancient Egyptians were Hamites, so-called Africans, but in a spiritual sense, the modern day Egyptians is talking about these so-called white people. 
all right, you so-called Americans. Why? Because the, the, the modern day Egypt is talking about America. All right. When you read about e Egypt in the scriptures and these prophecies, it's speaking about America. OK, the place of the Israelites captivity. And the scripture says what? Now, the Egyptians are men and not God or the most high in their horses, flesh and not spirit. Remember, horses speaking about their power. They're carnal. They got they, they, their power is carnal. It's not spirit. Right. It says "And the Lord shall stretch out his hand. Both he that helpeth shall fall and he that is hoping shall fall down. And they shall all fail together. See that? So you're trying to help you're trying to help America in, in, in their, their deeds and tasks. You know, mainly you try to fight against the Lord. Your ass gonna fall right along with him. All right. Uh, the, that dragon being cast down to the earth. All right, let's go back and um we'll uh, wrap it up. You know, the video might have went on a little longer, but you know, it's all good. All right, Revelation 12 and 8, and prevail not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. So we just explained that that's talking about uh, Esau's military and the other nation's military that's going to join in to that fight are going to lose terribly, man. Because we just, excuse me, we just read that how the, the Egyptians are men and not the most high. You're fighting against a, a spiritual entity, man. All right, the 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 angels and the, the chariots is all spiritual. Okay, they don't move and they don't maneuver and operate like like a fighter jet or a spaceship or whatever, man. It's totally spiritual. See that verse nine? It says, "And the great dragon was cast down." Speaking of again, Esau, Edom, his military. All right, this new modernized uh, Roman Empire. It says, was cast down that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Now, again, this is not speaking about the actual uh, the spiritual demon Satan. It's speaking about his physical counterpart, man, which is Esau. Again, Esau, Edom, the wicked. See that? And then it says what? Verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our power and the power of his anointed for the accuser of our brethren is cast down. <laughs> so you know right there that this is this speaking about man. All right. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our power day and night. So this, this is speaking about men. Esau, this damn devil, he's going to be cast down. Then the kingdom is going to come. That's why it says now it's out. Now it's come salvation. Let's let's let's, let's end it off on this because right, that was the main point. This is Obadiah one. In the last verse, it says, "It's Obadiah one and twenty one, and saviors shall come up on Mount Zion, which is talking about Israel, to judge the mount or the government of Esau." And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. See that? So Esau has to be judged first before the kingdom comes, man. That's the order of the prophecy. All right. Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Which is how you can link that dragon or that serpent to Esau. Because Esau is going to be the nation that's ultimately going to be destroyed before the kingdom comes. And that's something that vocab Maloney's Christians don't want to deal with, man. <laughs> you know, so that's why Apostle Tara said, man, you, you deal with a Christian, you you drown them in drown them in prophecy, man, because they ain't got it. All right. So. um, So, yeah, man, Uh, hopefully that made sense. I know I, I know I probably was a little all over the place. The guy just went off the top of the head and <clears throat> really have scriptures written down. But hopefully that, uh, you know, through the spirit, you know, that was explained well. You know, so with that, I'm going to sign off. Giving no praise on the glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai Bashim Rachakwadash. And uh, Lord willing to the next uh video, we're gonna say Shalom.